Hey everyone, it's Cheryl from Tinker's Card Art here, and I'm pretty excited. It's Mother's Day today, so happy Mother's Day to all of you out there who are moms, moms of people, moms of pets. Happy Mother's Day to you all. And it's also an important day for me because my art membership opens today. So you've probably seen a post or an email and all that business, but yes, today's the day, the 8th, we're opening the art membership, the Cardist membership. And we're open till the 14th. So I would uh, in invite you in. So let me just show you. I thought we would paint a little uh, fun project for moms, but it could be for anyone. Quick little flower paintings. I'll show you how, how easy it is. Um, I found these little canvases at Hobby Lobby yesterday. And I've painted a lot of these miniature canvases before and put them on the little easels. But I thought these would be fun just to put a little magnet tape on the back and you can make them into little magnets. You can get the magnetic tape, it's adhesive on one side and you can stick it right on there. And um, they're great little gifts for people. Or if you do craft fairs or art shows, they're great for little uh, for sales. So watch how quick you can do these. Hey, Zena, good morning, happy Mother's Day. Thank you guys for watching. Say hello when you come in. Um, and I guess you can all hear me okay. So let me know if you can't. And I'm going to paint flowers on these little canvases. We've done them with landscapes and all sorts of things, but I'm gonna do some flowers just to show you how quick you can do some little roses or some sunflowers, and you could decorate little canvases like this, but really you could put, put paint them on anything. I'm actually gonna pop on tomorrow and paint some on this um, straw hat. I was at Hobby Lobby, <laughs> I didn't really need to be. And so I found these and I found all kinds of cool hats that were like, this might've been $7.99 or something. And I've got some, cowboy hats. So we're going to have some fun painting unusual things this week. So I'm just using my acrylic paints. Hi, Shelly. Good morning from Minnesota. Good morning from Maine. I'm in Maine today. So I'm, I'm in the, I'm in from Massachusetts, but I, I'm up here in Maine this weekend. So nice to hear you. Oh, you can hear me, Diana. Yay. Um, did you not, if, did you receive an email from me, Diana? I have an email, but I'm going to put it in the links here too. So let me put the link for the membership here as well. Um, it, you, if you're on my me, email list, you will get that. If, um, if you are not, there's posts all over Facebook. I feel a little like, um, you know, putting too much out there, but uh, I want to make sure everyone finds what they need. So let me, I'm going to give you the uh, link right now to signing up. And yep, this is the sign up link. So let me get that to you in the chat here and see if I can put it in the chat. If you don't see it, because some destinations will not see it, um, it's on my YouTube des des um, uh, destination. But I will put it in, as soon as I'm done, I'll put it in the comments too. But go to the Facebook page, Tinker's Card Art, you'll find it and um, check your email. Okay, so I'm going to just use the acrylic craft paints that we that we usually use. I don't have all my brushes up here in Maine, so I'm gonna make do with what I have. To make the roses, let's paint the roses first. I use a flat brush. Uh, this is a filbert. It's easier with a straight flat, but this one is going to be a little bit too big, I think, for these teeny tiny canvases. Although I have a tiny little flat too, but I'm gonna use, the, use this little filbert. And if I need to, I have a teeny tiny little flat brush too here, so. Let's start with that. What I did for the background, super simple. Um, I just painted these black. And I think I wanna paint the sunflower on the purple because of course, if you put two opposites of the color wheel together, they really pop. So this purple with a yellow flower on top is gonna to really work. Hey Barb from Michigan, thanks for watching. And then I have a just a Prussian a dark blue that I put a little white into. I thought that would be nice for some white daisies because they'll really pop on there too. So I hope everybody's enjoying their Mother's Day today. And um, it's, a, it's a beautiful day in Maine. It's a little chilly. It was 47 when I came up yesterday. So it's sunny, but it's a little chilly. So I've just base coated those little canvases. And these guys we're going to add some little flowers too. I'm going to put some roses you can always um, leave a little space and write a little saying or Happy Mother's Day. Super easy to do it with just a paint marker. So that would work really well. But I'm going to just go on and I'm going to paint the leaves first because they're going to be underneath my roses. And I've got, um, like I said, I don't have all my supplies here. So I have some Prussian blue and some yellow. So I'm going to make a dark green. You can make a nice earthy dark green with black and yellow too. So 
you can really mix up all your colors. I know you hear me say it all the time, all your colors from your primaries. So I've mixed up, mixed up a bit of a dark green. I know it's a pretty dark green there. I might just take the corner of my brush into a little bit of the white, pat it out. When I do these roses and some of these flowers and leaves, I use kind of a one stroke method where I'm loading a few colors on my brush. I load the colors on my brush. You can almost see a little bit of white on the tip there. But I always want to pat it down a little bit first before I go into the piece so that it's just a little blended. And you can simply make little flowers this easy. You just sort of press and pull and wiggle. And I'm making little leaves. That's dark on that dark background. Lots of times you don't know what it's going to look like till you try it. So what I'm going to do, I want it a little lighter. So I'm just going to take a little yellow, make it a little lighter, back to my white again, and make some leaves. I'm going to put just a little uh, grouping of roses on top here. It's just a little sample just to show you how easy, but I want to have it like a little bouquet with some leaves behind it. So can you see I've made a, a bigger leaf here, a little smaller leaf. I'm just randomly putting them around the edge where I know my grouping is going to be of roses. Of course, you can make some in the middle if you want to. I might just go back and fill in if there's any background space showing. So I'm just going to go back into my green and take a little white. And just going to make a little few different shapes. You can make a few small ones. You can make some big ones. I'm just starting with something that looks like that. I know it looks kind of crazy and doesn't look like much there. But the roses on top will be nice. I'm going to use that same brush for this little one. This is just a tiny little square. And I thought, wouldn't it be cute with the little magnet on the back, put them on the fridge, and have like a little grouping of one of each or, or something. So I'm just going to make some little... little leaves on that guy. I do have a nice lime green here. So I'm going to just wipe off that brush. And I'm going to take some of that lime green, same technique, just it's a lighter, brighter green, which we could very well have made too, by mixing our primaries, I would have needed a, a more of an ultramarine blue to mix with my cad yellow to get that brighter color in a little white. Um, the Prussian blue is making it more earthy, more like when you're mixing it with black. Hey, Sharon. Hi, thanks for saying hello. Thanks for watching. Just dipping the little corner into the uh, white and pressing that down a little bit. Remember, if you're just joining us, this is always recorded. It's on the page. You can go back and watch it. So don't worry if, you, if you're just joining in. And so I'm going to make some. See how those little lighter leaves really pop? They really are a little brighter. And that's kind of a nice contrast to those little uh, more dull leaves. So I'm just throwing these in here and there. They can very well overlap a little bit if you want. They can overlap some of the leaves. You don't have to go and space them all perfectly. I make it more like a bouquet, which would be really natural. And it would not um, have one thing separate from everything else. You would just have them all together. So that's just a little bit of leaves there. And so I'm going to just go ahead now and put, I'm going to put the leaves on my other pieces and give that a minute to dry. So when I go on to with my pink roses, it will show up a little nicer and not mix that green in with everything. So I'm going to just go in with the uh, same brush. I'll go back to my darker. Actually, I'll go back to my darker um, green. But you know what? I don't know if it's going to be as I think I might just work with this green. This is such a dark color and it's the Prussian blue. The mix with the Prussian blue is not going to show up much. Let me try the lime green with a little bit of white and this is going to be daisy so we're going to do a similar kind of background with our sunflower we'll maybe make a little stalk and some leaves more that shaped hi julie thank you thanks thanks for the compliment i appreciate it um we're just painting some little flowers on these canvases this morning they're little tiny canvases i found at hobby lobby and then i'm going to take some adhesive magnetic tape and just put it on the back of them so i'm going to just paint some leaves on this one i'm just using this technique where i use a flat brush or filbert flats easier i only have a filbert here i put some lime green i put a little bit of white on the corner and i'm just making those little strokes hey charlotte happy mother's day to you too charlotte is in the membership and she is doing some awesome paintings and all kinds of fun creative things so thank you charlotte for popping in i, I am here painting and i'm forgetting i do want to mention the membership is open today the link is in the comments or on the my tinker's cart art page it's an art membership where you belong to it we have a private group we do uh three full classes every month two of them i record and send to you 
or you can find them on our private group. One we paint together. It's a little bit more simple painting. We all hang out. We have fun. Right, Charlotte? We have fun. <laughs> hey, Sherry. And we just chat and we paint. Or sometimes some people just watch and paint later. It's always recorded. So you get two fully recorded um, classes a month. You get one by Zoom that we do. And then we also do another Zoom get together. It could be a painter's choice where you just bring whatever you want to paint. It could be we're learning a technique or we'll do a just one night and we'll do waves or we'll do trees or we'll do something that some elements that you can use to incorporate into your own paintings uh, and creating your own paintings. Um, I, I provide you with plenty of tracers and ideas and color palettes, but you might want to paint, you know, your own pictures and photos. And I am going to try to help you you know, put those together and by learning these little elements of water and mountains and different things, you might very well just be able to create your own paintings, which is kind of cool. So just little leaves for now. I'm going to do the sunflower on here. This is going to just be one big sunflower. So that needs a little bit of green in the back, but not much. We could just do a few little, maybe a few little leaves. And this one I think we will do as a replica of one of my first paint night paintings I've done with people, which was a big 16 by 20 with just a big sunflower face with a little stem and some leaves. So we're going to paint it in miniature here. And I just have a stalk there. So I've simply just taken the lime green again, a little bit of white on my brush, which I sort of lost there. So I'm just going to kind of lay that back in. So do I, I have a little bit of a highlight on there and just a few leaves. And the rest is going to be all one big happy sunflower face. Okay, so we've got the green on there. We're going to go back to our roses here. Then we'll do our I'm going to do some white daisies and some sunflowers, which will give you a nice uh, round, rounded out uh, group of flowers. There's so many fun flowers, though. Um, we do hibiscus and we do lily of the valleys and all kinds of cool things. But uh, yeah, these are great idea, Julie. Like I was saying, too, if you do craft fairs or that sort of thing, um, these would be a great little seller. And if you want to paint it on little glass votives, you could use this design on all kinds of little things. And in the membership, just so you guys know, if you are a crafter or an artist or maybe a teacher, if you're a member of the membership, then you have full license to take any of my artwork and paintings and tutorials and things and use them for any in-person classes, craft fairs, whatever you'd like to do. So that's another little benefit if you want to. I'm always giving you little tips and tricks of things to paint that are good gift items. So roses, I'm going to just use my, they're going to be pink, but I'm going to just use my cad red. When I mix it with a little white on the tip, like we're doing for the leaves, you will get more of a pink rose. This exact method could be done with any color. If you want to do yellow roses or orange or whatever, make up a color. So I'm loading my brush with just the red. I'm dipping the corner into the white just a little bit. Again, you can see what it looks like kind of there. But before I go to the canvas, I want to pat it out a little just to give that a chance to blend. And I do this as a one stroke row. So I know it's going to look a little fast, but we do do tutorials on the page and in the membership of really digging in and just painting. We've done this uh, just one stroke painting one night, practicing, just practicing the brush strokes. If you join the membership, you get access to the content that we've put out for the whole year. It's been a year now, my first anniversary for the membership. Yeah, it's kind of cool. So you can go back and search and find any of those tutorials or paintings. So it's a whole year's worth of paintings that you're going to get all of a sudden when you join, and then you're going to get three and four a month going forward. Don't be overwhelmed. It's not Netflix. You don't have to try to consume it all at once. Find what you like. Search landscapes, search animals, search things that are blue. You can just pick and choose what you want to paint. You don't have to paint it all because it's, everything is not for everyone, but you will find something you like. So I just am using that white paint on the tip just towards the top and I'm wiggling it and I'm making just a little center, like the little bowl for the rose. Looks great on a black background, I think. And I'm gonna do the same, load this brush the same way each time, a little red, dip it into the corner with white, and then I'm making these outer petals. Just wiggling the brush and using that white on the edge. This is a tiny bit big, this brush, so I'm struggling a little bit on this tiny little canvas but a little smaller square brush would, would make it super easy. And then I just kind of do some of these petals coming out. When I get to that tiny canvas, I may uh, use one of the other brushes and see if that works. But that's as simple as you can make it. You can make them a little more complicated if it was bigger and put lots more little petals coming in. I don't like that green showing through there, so I'm just gonna put a petal there. But same thing, I, every few strokes, when I find I need to get more color, I just load the red, dip corner into the white, press it down just a tiny bit. 
trying to keep oops there you are hey sandy happy mother's day to you too i was looking at the comments as we talk so if you have a question or anything at all please just put them in the comments and i can see those as we go and i do the back little part of the bowl the little front i call it the little bowl that's that little center you can make some roses really tightly closed up and you can as easily as this little red and a little white you can as easily as that make just little buds too so let me finish this one. I'm going to put, I kind of skip now to the outer petals and always with the light white bit to the outside edge, just wiggling it to make a little bit of a natural rose shape. These are a little open, like I said, but you could make them closed more if you wanted more buds and, and that sort of thing. And I usually do three. Uh, things in threes are nice and, and appealing for design um, elements in your paintings, three of something or sixes. I usually use that as a little rule, but of course rules are made to be broken, so you don't have to, that's not gospel. You don't have to always adhere to that. So there we have three little roses. Oops, I try to get under the camera. And then again, if you want, you can make these little buds. Let's just kind of hanging out here and there. I would usually add some little white flowers around just to kind of spice up the design, which we'll do. Maybe I'll do one big one, which will be easier for me with this crazy big brush. And then you can really see how I do it. So I'm just, I always load the brush with red, dip it into the white, pat it down a tiny bit. I start with, of course, the white to the outside edge, and I'm making that little center. That's the back of that little bowl. Now, you may have lost a lot of the blend. If you've lost the white on the tip, you can always dip it in a little bit just so you can see it. But I can usually get two or three strokes out without uh, having to reload. And then, again, dip that in. And I'm making these really outside edge petals. A little bit more color. And then you just cut these little petals into the middle and as many as you want. You could like wrap them right in here. You could put another down here, make it more full. There. And so what I would do next is I take a little, either a tiny, like a tiny little square brush, or you could use your little detail brush. I just take some white paint, and I like to put some little flowers. Actually, that's going to be too big. Peeking out. I don't use, sometimes they're a whole little flower, but always some peeking out. When I make a flower, even when we go to the sunflowers and the daisies, you'll see I always go from the outside edge of the petal and pull in. It makes a better petal shape. These are so tiny, it does not matter, but I would get in the habit of just, say I wanna make some petals just sticking out from the back here, I just press, press, and press, and it's just a little bit of a petal peak, a little bit of a flower peeking out. Now, because it's a dark background, I'm going to pop in some white where the center is gonna go. So when that dries and I put a little yellow center on, it'll really pop because if yellow is so transparent, so if you try to put that on a dark background, it, it's you'll hardly see it. What you would see probably is anything that's sort of a green tint because you're putting your yellow on that black background. So just make your little center with white for now. And uh, if you want these little flowers to be done in yellow, just do them all in white. When it's dry, go over with yellow and that would be perfect. Happy Mother's Day, Becky, to you too. Nice to see you guys on here. Thank you for taking a little time off your Sunday and your Mother's Day to, to pop in and watch me paint. So sometimes you can have a whole flower. So I just all I'm doing is pressing and pulling in. When I do these guys, you're going to see more um, of a way that I make the strokes look like petals. These are teeny. It's almost just like little lines. Just pop them in wherever you want. Can you see how it just breaks it up and makes it look more bouquet, like a bouquet with that? You can make them peeking out behind some of the leaves. You can put them anywhere you want. I'll make sure I get the little centers though, so those will stay bright yellow afterwards. Um, if you want to, if you've got a bigger design especially and you want to put a few little vein lines in your leaves, I'm thinning my water down whenever I my, uh, paint with water. Whenever I do fine detail work, I'm always adding a lot of paint to my brush and a nice light touch. And you can just get some little vein lines in here if you wish. And just do as many as you can. Go back into your paint. I'm always adding a little more water just to have it nice and thin and a light stroke. I'm hardly got any pressure on this brush. I want a very light stroke. I know it's hard to make fine lines, but a trick is to, first of all, keep that paint thin, 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 hardly press down 
go from the inside of the vein to the end so it's naturally going to get a little thinner and when you're putting it on paint on there pull it off when you're ready to get that thin line so you're pressing a tiny bit maybe and then pulling it off you can get super duper fancy if you want to go ahead and add something like little curly cues this sort of work could be done of course with a paint marker too but sometimes I just want to fill in the empty space so I'll probably just do a little you know some little curly cues I will pop in the yellow I don't need to even wash my brush I'm just going to pick up a little yellow and pop in those little centers you don't notice on this one but if it was bigger I might take a little green and where I made these little buds I might go around them and do this little like those little leaves that are in covering the buds see it's almost hard to see let me see if I get the brush and show you like this one little here see this tiny little bud here I just kind of go around it and make it look like a little rosebud barely can see it but you might see it on the bigger one here um, so if you want you could just put those on there and that is that now we could have made a little smaller design i'll put it on a little bigger uh piece and with your marker right happy mother's day or something it'd be nice and gold marker or maybe white and that is as simple as a little rose will be this guy's a little bigger you saw me a little closer to make the um petals but i did not put a bud so if you want to do a little bud it's the same thing i'm using a tinier brush a little bit of white on the corner can you see i'm just going to press and pull and those are going to turn into little buds after you could also have done same brush same colors loaded but you could do like we're doing the little back of that rose bowl you could just do this and leave it and that could almost be like a little closed up rose that's oops i always go the wrong so the wrong way so something like that and then i think it just needs some of those little yellow flowers white sorry white flowers they're just to fill in any little empty spaces you don't need to put them in but I just like to make it full and and just some different elements to make it interesting to look at and that's that I'm going to thin my paint again and just get a few little veins in there and it's just always starts at the inside of the petal the, the um, leaf and out press just light strokes you can curve them if it was a big leaf you could put the little veins coming out like that they're kind of small for that but can you see I put little veins coming out of the main little vein but this uh, something this tiny you really don't need to think of all the things you could paint this on what do you think what we could paint this like I said on little glass votives um wine glasses we've done them on wine glasses fabric all kinds of things you could paint them on finish it off by just drawing on a little bit yellow for the centers of those guys so this is the rose we've got a little rose painted there let's paint the daisies i want to show you how to make those petals and then we'll do the sunflowers daisies are pretty simple we're just going to use white paint i would usually maybe use a little bit of a smaller filbert this is a little big so i'm going to use my big um like a big round brush because I can kind of flatten that out. But a filbert would be ideal because of the shape of the petals. I'm going to take some white, moving it over here because I've got a lot of red mixed in with my white there. And I'm going to just make the petals from the outside and I'm going to press and pull it towards me. And I'm just pressing and pulling it in and look at the nice little petal shape you can get. And I'm going to just go all around and bringing that in. So I'm going outside in I'm taking this round brush or same as if you were using a, round, a flat or a filbert, just press it and pull it in, press it and pull it in. You can put as many little petals in there as you want, but go ahead and make that center white so that we can put a nice bright yellow in there. And maybe I'll do a whole flower here. So I'm pressing, I'm going all the way around and pulling in and using the pressure of the my, my brush to form the petal shapes. So I've got two daisies there that are full flowers. You don't have to put them all that way and just scatter them. You want them again to look like a bouquet. So look, it, we'll put some just popping out of the back there, some petals popping out here. Again, always just getting my little center in there, a couple petals there maybe, maybe a little more of a flower, half of a flower there. 
And that's just a nice little, it's really not centered. I probably should have done that better, but it's just a little tiny thing. So that's that. Let's do a big one on here so you can really see how I do it. So I am going to do the same thing. I'm going to press really well and pull in, and I'm just going to work my way all around. If it's easier, you can just turn your, your piece and pull it in towards you. I'm used to painting upside down, so that's okay. And make sure you get that little center in there. And I like the way the blue is showing through it a little bit. It's almost using it like making a little shading in there and whatnot. But if you wanted it brighter, you could let it dry and do another coat. That would be easy enough too. So little flowers on this guy around. I usually do yellow because we've got the, yellow, the white flower there. So the yellow, like I said, is so transparent. I would either paint it in white, let it dry and go over with your yellow. But if you have a transparent color, if you mix a little white with it and it gives it that just little bit of opaque that you are looking for. So sometimes that works too. So if you just, I've mixed quite a bit of white with my yellow. And if I want to make those little flowers again, I'm going to use my judgment and say, well, the green is showing through a little bit. I'm going to base coat it in white, or I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to go with it this time because I don't want to have to have you wait while it dries. I would probably maybe put um, the white petals and then go back over with yellow, but this is going to do the job. So I'm just mixing it with white to get it to to show a little bit. So here I've done a whole little flower. So here and there you can put just a few petals. Sometimes you want to put them right in the middle of that little cluster so it really looks like a nice full little bouquet. And anywhere you want, you can do a whole one. You could overlap it. It does not have to, they're not going to all have to stand on their own. So again, stick them out. And then you can always go and put more leaves out too. If you wanted to do some little leaves that were maybe not even highlighted, but just little leaves here and there could almost be like those little vines with the little leaves you could I'm just really looking at this shape and filling in the empty spaces I've left and you could just do something like this coming out somewhere not the best when I painted upside down but you get the picture I'm just filling in some little spaces here and there some could just be little leaves sticking up here and there and again I overlap things so I would go right over what I have you want it to look full like a like a real bouquet the little yellow flowers on this particular little piece will just probably have like a little dark brown center or something. You can use whatever you like if you want purple or whatever. But I just am going to put, oh, that's a big glob of paint. <laughs> Whoops. And, you know, wherever you want. So for centers, I'm going to a darker color. I'm just going to wipe my brush off. I didn't actually get any brown paint out. Let me see. Yeah, brown paint. I brought like just the uh, bare basics with me here this weekend. And it's just a little dot. You're just going to pop it right in there. A burnt sienna would be a nice brown to use for that too. This is just a burnt umber. Just simple as that. And let's get those little centers in. So I'm just going to get some nice bright yellow, pop that in over the white. If these were really big, I would show you some real different techniques even for just to make the center look rounded. But I don't think we need to do much with it. If I do anything, I would just take a little brown dot and put it in the middle or over to the side of these centers. And that's all you need. If it, like I said, if it was big or big 16 by 20 with the big daisies or the sunflowers, I would give you some techniques to shade it so it really looks like a um, like it's got some shape to it and it's rounded. But you could just simply put a little dot in there. If you want, if they were bigger again, but I'm going to show you on this, you could take any color. I'm going to take this dark greeny blue that we made over here before. Thin it down because I'm going to use tiny strokes, thin strokes. And you could go and make some little vein lines coming out of the middle there. And it's wet, so it would, no, it's not, it's not bad. If you wanted, you could let it dry. I'm not going to make you sit and watch paint dry, so. Can you see how that shades a little bit and just makes that center look like it's sunk into the flower a bit? And here, it really, it's so tiny, you really don't need them. But if you want to, you can add something little like that. And the vein lines, if you want to. Again, I'll just do a couple. You can go and do them however you like. But I don't think we really need that many there. Maybe a few. 
It's my thin, thin, thin down white. And you guys who are just popping on, welcome. Happy Mother's Day. Um, and this is recorded, so you can go back and watch the whole thing. Let's do the sunflowers. They're fun. And especially if they're big, I start with some shades of brown, a goldy yellow, whatever you have for brown uh, oranges. Did I say brown? Oranges and yellows. Because I like to have it a little darker underneath. So I'll have it a little bit like, I'll just use, I had this uh, color out for something I was testing. So I would just make the petals like we did for the daisy, outside in, press, press, press. Sunflowers have a lot of little layers of petals. So we'll just start with this. Any orange you have, burnt sienna, something like that. And I just fill that in that way. And I like to start with that dark. If you've painted with me, you know I do a lot of um, dark to light painting, which is what I like to do. Start kind of dark, a more dull, then lighten it up, and then brighter for the last few strokes, and that pops, and it gives it some nice dimension. So we are going to have a yellow sunflower, but we're just starting it with that darker uh, orangey color. And then I'm just going to build up. So I'm going to take whatever color I have that is the next color. That's this gold yellow. So this is not as bright as we're going to end up. It's super thick. It was like an old bottle of paint, but we're going to make it work. And I would just go right on top. Now, you might even want to dry this sometimes, but I do like the way the wet paint pulls that orange in with it, and it gives you kind of a natural look. Can you see you've got some of the orange pulling in there? And this gold, this is just a deep yellow, cad yellow deep, or whatever you have that's kind of a goldy yellow. And I'm just going to layer the petals on top. I'm not worried about matching petal for petal. I'm just putting them on top, letting some of that orange streak in. Some of that orange could show completely in the back. Just like that. And we're just going to get lighter, as you can imagine. And I've got this nice light yellow, but I think I need to let that dry one second. So what we can do is let's just finish up our leaves and then we'll go back. I, my stem was not long enough, so we'll just touch that up. It's the green, and then I had a little bit of white on the edge of the brush. This I've lost. I can make a few more leaves wherever I want to. And I'm going to put a paint on these guys because they're pretty big size. So thank you guys for watching this morning. And those of you who might have just popped in, I am opening my art membership today. So I want to mention that again. Just I just don't want anybody to miss it who might want to join. It's no obligation. It's a monthly fee. But if you find it doesn't isn't your fit, you can cancel at any time. But you get quite a bit for your for your money you, for much less than just a one off paint night in, in person or online. Um, because I get kind of, you know, sometimes that price or more just for the one paint night, you're gonna get two recorded full length paintings, one that we paint together and then a night of Q and A and tutorials. We just get together by Zoom and kind of hang out and address different issues. And it's really super fun. And the best part even besides the classes, which are fun and, and good, um, is the community. You have a whole community of like-minded artists there. They share their work, they help you with yours. There's always someone, if you are stuck, I'm always on. You know, I can address anything you're having trouble with, any struggles. We could go on a, a Zoom and, or you could, I, sometimes I download the painting of someone who's just stuck on a little something. I'll download it and then paint a little bit over the photo to show them what to do. Um, although a good tip is if you have a little paint, a painting that's giving you trouble or it looks wonky, you just can't figure it out, hold it up in front of a mirror or put, take a picture of it. Because as I'm painting here with you guys even, in person, I really can't tell like there's something wrong, but when I see it on the video there, it pops out. So hold it in the mirror sometimes and you'll really, see, your eye just doesn't, sees it a little differently and you can pick out some little issues that might be bothering you. So that's a little tip there. I want this just to be sunflower, so I'm not putting any little flowers around it. And I'm gonna go back now and add my cad yellow, which is that brighter yellow. Same thing, I'm just gonna press, I'm pressing and pulling. I'm going to grab some white because because it's still wet and I just don't, like I said, I don't want to have you to have to watch the paint dry or take the hair dryer out and that's so noisy. You're just going to pull in. I am pulling away too much of that paint, but you're going to get the idea. You can just make as many layers of, as you want. And when it's dry and you go on with a mixture of that yellow and a little white for a few strokes, they're going to pop right out at you. So that'll be, we might be able to add some of those at the end if we do the centers next. So let's just get some petals on there. 
These guys have those really dark centers. Sometimes the burnt umber is even not dark enough. I like to make it really dark. So I might add a little black or purple or dark Prussian blue or something. I, I, I'm a very colorful painting painter. I love to paint whimsically, lots of color. So I'm, I'm, it's rare that I'll use black by itself. I'll always mix a blue with it usually, which is kind of just, I don't know why, it just gives me a, a little bit um, of color into that black that black hole so i am going to get some black um the dark brown maybe some of that prussian blue i just want it really dark to start and they have these big centers so you can see it's a nice big size just fill it in i'm dragging in the yellows underneath so it's not as dark as i'd like but it's okay it's not bad we'll get that center in It'd be kind of fun to paint just a little smiley face on there i think Oh, so the membership, that's open today, open till the 14th. Um, if you want to find out about it, just click on the link I have in the comments. Or if you don't see the link when I am offline, I can go into uh, the Facebook post and add that link. But it's all over my pages these days and my email list. So you should find it pretty easily or just send me a message. I'd love to have you join me. We've got people joining this morning. It's kind of fun. It's exciting for all the new people. We have some great paintings lined up for May. And the summer, he could have had another little leaf there. Although it looks like two little arms, which is kind of cute. All right, now what I would do, because these are simple and not the big ones, maybe take a little white on my brush. I want, they have that little indent in the middle, the sunflowers. So if I just take a little white maybe and make a little oval shape in the middle, it gives me a little illusion of that indent. If it was a big 16 by 20, I would have a different, more, more uh, detailed way to do this. But that is good enough. It's just a little white that's mixing with the brown, which is fine, but it gives it just looks like a little indent there. And then pollen dots are the most fun on here. So what I do is I put any color that's on my palette, little dots all around the center. Some are spilling out on the leaves, some are spilling into the center. They're not a perfect little row of dots. You can use your detail brush. You could use the back end of your brush. You could use, I have these little tools that I use for when I'm I don't know what I do with them. They're little tools, like people use them for dotting and whatnot. So I just take whatever color on here and I just dot them around randomly. And, it, and it's just supposed to be like little pollen dots, but I'm using it more as a design element. I just like the way that looks. And like I said, I'll use all different colors. So I would go and use some of the green and the purple, whatever color you have, you may want to have it dry at this point and then all your colors will really show up but i'm going to throw them on there now and can you see i'm not having a nice perfect line of dots around the center i am scattering them on the center on the edge out onto the petals I can use some orange whatever color red whatever's on there purple i just do a whole bunch of little little dots there it just adds a little something, something. And there we are. We've got all these fun little flowers painted on canvases that we're going to make into magnets. And as this dries, I am going to add some brighter yellow. You can kind of see how it's going to look when you get a bit of that bright on top. And it's still wet, so you're not getting the full effect. But you will try it on yours, and you will love it. If you guys have any questions, I'm here. Just put them in the comments. I want you all to enjoy the day. And I appreciate you guys taking some time out of your day to watch me do this um, painting. But it is a lot of fun. And I hope you'll consider joining the membership if you are so inclined. Have a great Sunday. And I'm going to be on painting every day this week. So we're going to do some hats and some funky different things that aren't just tr traditional canvases. So jo you know, join in. Um, if you'd like to be notified when I go live to paint, I don't have my little card I usually show you, but I have a texting list. And if you sign up on that list, if you text me at this number, you will be on my list and I'll send you a little heads up that, oh, I'm going on to paint now. Because I don't plan it usually. I just sort of turn up. So I'll write it here for you. It's 978-315-2000. You could take a screenshot. I'll put it in the comments after too. But that way you'll be on my list and you will be notified when I'm doing some fun painting, especially this week. I'll go on every day and do something different. So have a great day and thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a good one.